Our latest billionaire adventure starts here in the US of A, in Los Angeles. In the LA HQ, a brand new club president was about to be announced. After the tyrannical rule of the outgoing president, the king of Saudi Arabia, things were going to be changing. You see, he had banned all women members from attending club meetings, something the new president would reverse as soon as she came into power. Oprah Winfrey had not only won the election, she was the first ever woman to be made president of the club. Now, while she was banned from attending any of the world's clubhouses during the king's term, she had decided to go on a spiritual mission, travelling across South America, where she fell in love with the country of Venezuela. She had loved her time there so much she had built a school to help underprivileged girls. Now as she sat at the head of the table of the billionaires club, she wanted to make a huge statement. She had seen various groups of men battle it out in different challenges and was angry that no women had ever been invited to join in. She wanted to prove that women could compete just as well as the men, so she was going to make a challenge all of her own. She called in two of the most famous young celebrity female billionaire club members. Firstly, it was Rihanna, singer, actress and businesswoman. And next, Kylie Jenner, socialite and businesswoman and the youngest of the Kardashians. Oprah stated to everyone in the room that unlike the men's version, this wouldn't be an individual battle between the women. In fact, it would also not only have women taking part. She wanted to take on the men at their own game. Girls team versus boys team in a battle of the sexes, so they needed three opponents to face. Oprah Winfrey decided to invite the three previous billionaires from the last challenge. Winner, Jay-Z, the runner-up, Michael Jordan, and last but not least, Kanye West. Oprah knew that Jay-Z and Jordan were really good friends, and that Jay-Z also got on with Kanye. They'd just done a concert together. But she also knew that Kanye and Jordan had huge beef with each other. She hoped this could stop them working fully to their potential as a team, giving the girls an advantage. So, with the two new teams in place, Oprah Winfrey told everyone the rules of the game. They would be going to her beloved Venezuela, one of the lowest ranked footballing nations in South America. The boys would be heading to San Cristobal to take over Deportivo Tacaria, and the girls team would be going to Caracas to take over their arch rivals Caracas Football Club. And following the previous challenges there would also be a point system to decide the winner. For every Copa Libertadores won, they would collect 5 points. For every Suda Americana won, they would collect three points. If they won the Recopa, they get two points. And for every league title won, it's one point. Opera would be the official owner of her team, with Rihanna being a managing director and Kylie a director. On the boys team, due to him winning the last challenge, Jay-Z would be the owner, with Jordan becoming the managing director and Kanye a director. With the two teams in place and with Opera and the girls having a massive chip on their shoulders and a point to prove, this could turn into the most interesting challenge yet. So who will come out on top as these two teams go head to head in another billionaire football manager battle? Well, we will find out in the battle of the sexes. Hello, I'm Boone and welcome back to the Billionaire Challenge. As always, thanks for joining me. It's massively appreciated. Make sure you do all the good stuff. Subscribe, hit the bell, get involved in the comments, become a patron. That is huge for my channel, it really does keep it going. So if you are a patron, thank you very much. But most of all, thank you for your view and thank you for checking out another one of these in this little series. I'm having a lot of fun making. They're easy to make, it is just fun. And just like the others, there'll be a safe file link down below. And if you have a go yourself for this little challenge, um, why not have a go? Could be fun, you could enjoy it. So we're here in Venezuela for the battle of the sexes. You've seen a little story intro you know the score is a team of women versus a team of men something different in the series instead of just one billionaire taking over a team it's a team of billionaires on the board with more resources maybe available to him will that help i don't know but i'm quite excited so for a bit of fun if you can be asked put down in the comments now who do you think is going to win team girls or team boys because they are there's nothing different between them got the same attributes they've got the same business skills they've got the same resources but just like the story jordan and kanye like they do in real life by the way hate each other they've got a bit of beef i think it's to do with the shoes or something i'm not too sure um so will that hinder the boys in this freaking challenge i don't know let's look into it starting with the boys team now i think i pronounced it wrong i know i pronounced it wrong in that story um, Takira, is that how you'd say it? 
I'm going to call him Deportivo. Now, I've picked these two teams because they are the two best teams in Venezuela and they are actual rivals. I've not had to create a derby, I've not had to create a rivalry. That is already there. But there's also another reason why I chose Venezuela. I think Venezuela and Bolivia are two of the worst um, countries, really, apart from the tiny ones in South America. But, and I don't know why, but on the database, the cup competition in Venezuela has become extinct. It stopped a couple of years ago. I downloaded a league to use and it's extinct there. So I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm assuming it's extinct in real life. So there's only the league and I quite like that. The Bolivia league didn't really work too well. So I chose Venezuela mainly because they're just going to be fighting it out for league titles and then getting into continental football for Libertadores and Sudamericanas and all that stuff so I thought it'd be quite cool now just on like on other challenges recently I've built them both a stadium they had okay stadiums but we've got Team Boys Park very imaginative isn't it um, for Deportivo 50,000 capacity they've got the same ticket prices the same season ticket holders give them a little bit of a leg up and again like on the other challenges they've got 10,000 rep but we've seen other challenges a lot of it depends on where you are in the world the reputation of the leagues you're in so even though they're gonna have a lot of money and high reputation it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna get the Ronaldo's and the Messi's of this world but they still should be able to buy top class players and definitely improve the teams um, but again they've got state-of-the-art training state-of-the-art youth exceptional youth recruitment so hopefully they can create some of their own players and attract better players and train the players better that they've got now on their history page Deportivo have won the league beautiful trophy that it reminds me I mean I'm not really into hockey but it's got a look about it like that. Hockey, is it the NHL, National Hockey League? Looks like that, doesn't it? What's it called, that trophy? I don't know, because no offence, definitely not a hockey fan. Um, but they've got 10 league titles already. And there's the board. So will this make a difference? Because each one of them's got 20 resources, 20 business, the maximum that I usually give these guys. But you've got Jay-Z as an owner, Michael Jordan as a managing director, because Kanye came last in the last challenge, he's just a director. And again, like the other ones, I've not touched the players, I've not touched the staff or anything like that. Um, that is starting out as it is. Hopefully they will improve it. They will improve it, of course they will. This is the current squad though, arranged by value. I'm just going to look at the top player. Maurice Cova, and got a face, 29 year old, Venezuelan. He's, I mean, he looks okay. Be interested to see who they bring him. Now, over to the girls team, Caracas Football Club. Here we go, yep. Yeah. Founded in 1967, the arch rival of Deportivo. One thing I've noticed, and you see this sometimes, don't you, is the amount of sponsorships on the kits. I mean, what, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on that. I mean, what? I, where does it stop? How, how did he do that? Why did, I mean, they're getting more on it. Maybe they're getting more money for it. They need to. Can't see it ever happening here. Imagine that. They're going to end up with one on one arse cheek. You've got KFC on the other arse cheek. Freaking McDonald's logo on your knob. I mean, where's it stop? Bonkers, ain't it? Um, but again, they play the team girls park in Caracas. Same size, same tickets, as you can see. And they've got that rivalry. So they're going to be going toe to toe here, boys versus girls. I'm quite excited about it. Just to share with you, again, facilities. All top notch now they have 12 league titles in their cabinet already and four cups but this cup even though there's a trophy why is it extinct i mean i tried to look into it a little bit and it, i couldn't find anything i don't know did it, it in, in the in the editor it stopped in 2017 so i don't know if it's a fault they forgot to put it back on the guy who created the league didn't put it back on um but then i did like that that it's just a league title and continental football to go for. And here's the girls, Opera Winfrey, of course. Um, Rihanna, who's actually from Barbados. I knew that. I think some people think she's American, but she's not. Uh, and Kylie Jenner. I think she's made her billion. From, is it makeup or something? I'm not, I mean, I'm not. I know who Kardashians are. Never watched it in my life. I, well, I did watch something with a Kardashian in. Once. On a certain site but it's not for children that's for sure and this is their squad list arranged by value let's have a look at their top player lots of venezuelans richard sellis now one thing i did change again similar to some of the others is there was a foreigner rule scrap that there's no foreigner rule and um, they better bring in whoever they want 
from wherever they want. So here we go. Just like the others, we're going to jump forward 15 years. It's a good amount of time. Can't leave a computer running too long. I'll keep that consistency. Again, I know some people have said in other comments, you should do more. If you did 10 years more, they might have done it. Or if you did 20 years more. But it's a challenge. You've got a window of opportunity. You've got to capitalise on that window. If you left it running for 50 years, uh, in all these experiments, everyone would win everything eventually, I'm guessing. I just think 15 years is a good capping point. If you don't do it, they don't do it. But I'm assuming someone's going to win, of course, because they're fighting it out and they get points for the league title. You've seen the point system, won't go over it again. But, you know, there's, op there's options out there. They've got the, their version of the Champions League. They've got their version of the Europa League. They've got their version of the Super Cup to get points in. And, of course, the league. And, and like, no idea, really. Who's going to come out on top? I mean, I'm wearing pink because, you know, this is the first time the girls have joined um, the challenge. But I'm team boys, man. I'm team boys. I want the boys to do it. So here we are now. It's the 1st of January 2037. We've jumped forward 15 years and the world ranking for Venezuela has definitely improved. I think they were 55th. They're now 23rd. And they've got players in their top players playing for Real Madrid, Juventus, Al Khalij. Now, if you're worrying about that, I've not made a mistake like I did once on one of the other challenges. I took all the money away. Everything. There's no like little side experiment my, from my last Saudi Arabia challenge. That all went back to normal. Um, so that's a genuine um, player gone to Al Khalij. I just, I needed to say that in case you wondered. Um, because they were one of the teams in the last challenge. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's brilliant. One of my favourites. Um, but they've definitely improved the country having these two clubs with better facilities, I'm guessing. Obviously, Deportivo and Caracas are the two top teams. Well, just like the last one, I'm going to make a little bit of a graphic that I'll chuck on an overlay um, where it'll show you how many of each competition they've won, how much they've spent and how many points they collected. But we're just going to go through the transfers quickly. Um, and when you look at the numbers... They're low compared to some of the other ones, especially the Saudi Arabia one where we had a £501 million transfer window. Was it Kanye West who did that? I mean, they're still spending a lot more than they would have done originally, but the numbers are definitely, definitely lower. But did they need to spend it in this league to do well in this league and well in South America? Quickly go through the girls team, Caracas, um, and the numbers are looking pretty similar, to be fair. I'm at... I'm guessing. I don't think they would have spent a billion each. It's been the cheapest challenge yet, I think. Let's check out the boys team manager. And this gives away a lot. And you could probably work out things for yourself. But we'll put it all together for you. And um, now they brought in Gerardo Martino. Who I think in real life. Has he just become into Miami's manager? I think. Now he only left because he retired after eight years. Seven league wings. Four cut wins. And now they've got Victor Pacheco. Pacheco. You know me by now, surely. Uh, six leagues and five cups. Well, the numbers are definitely lower on the girls' team, but you know, until you add it up, you never know. You never know. Juan Carlos Osorio didn't last very long. Then they had a caretaker, and now they've had Marcello Gallardo. He pops up quite a bit. He's won five leagues and two cups. Let's check out the boys' best ever 11. I'm looking at names, I'm looking at names. I mean, I recognise a couple. You won't say there's any absolute world is. Like top, top end. Wonder Kids or anything. But it's Venezuela. Um, but one thing I've thought about, by the way, is I know everyone can go on Steam and you can download a league. But I was thinking of um, doing that for you at some point. Trying to get as many leagues as possible into one safe file database. Um, so you don't have to bother. And you don't have to have them all active, but you can switch them on and off depending on your computer or what you want to do. I'm thinking about doing that and turning it into a little video and putting it out there for you. Um, save you some work and give you the option of doing a, an amazing journeyman adventure maybe towards the end of FN23. I'm thinking about it. Let me know if you're interested. On to the girls team's best ever 11. Wesley Fafana. He's just destroyed his knee in real life, hasn't he? I'm pretty sure he's done his cruciates a summer. That's probably the most... The biggest name is jumping out at me. Now, because we had a look at the best player at the beginning, let's have a look at the best player value-wise now. Now, he's injured, but it's George Silvero for the boys. Obviously, a regent right back. Um, mm, all right. And for the girls, it's a Colombian. Yaliston Riacos. Riascos. Yal... 
Never happening. I mean, bloody hell, is that it? So this is the history of the league. It's all they had to battle it out for in Venezuela. And I think we're going to get the gist of who's won this. Um, but it's quite interesting. I mean, Deportivo won the first, what, four? But then Caracas won four. And you're thinking, is the tide turned? No, it hasn't. Deportivo win the next lot. Until this year, somebody else actually won it. On to one of my favourite tournaments. I love playing in South America. As you know, I'm a big Boca fan. Um, I love my Boca series. I wish it could have continued longer. Um, what to do that since I started YouTube. Love it. And I love when I get to go over there on my Journeyman Adventure series. I just love the Libertadores. I've watched many of documentary on it. It's a fantastic tournament. Format's old school like our Champions League is. And they've not ruined it just yet. Um, brilliant tournament. And if we look, you can see Deportivo won four, but Caracas... They got themselves one. I mean, Deportivo were running up once as well. On to the Sudamericana. This is their version, basically, of the Europa League. And if you get to third, I think, in the group stage, you, you can come down into this. Um, so teams have probably done that because Deportivo won themselves one. Check that out. Can't see Caracas anywhere. And then on to the Recopa Sudamericana, which is like a Super Cup. And Deportivo obviously got themselves quite a few. Caracas got themselves one. Girls, girls, girls. Let's well, see him down, girls. You're coming out all guns blazing. Like I said, this isn't, you know, actually girls versus boys. But it is in this. Um, and again, you never know what's going to happen. You never know how it's going to turn out. But the boys, like, they've absolutely ran away with this. Now, let's look at the FIFA Club World Cup to see. It obviously never won one. Um, but did they get far into it? And then the last one, you can see right there, Deportivo got knocked out by Chelsea early-ish. Previous tournament, Caracas did the best. They got to the semi-finals and not, got knocked out by Al Nazir. Which again, I did sound in the last episode, but Al Nazir weren't one of the teams. So that's just normal Al Nazir. And I changed all the bloody finances, trust me. Um, so that's just good. I just feel after my previous mistake, which one was it? Might have been the first time I did it. The second video I made, I forgot to, I forgot to take off. That was it. The English version, wasn't it? I forgot to take off their um, the money they get every month, the total commercial income. So he still had Barrow, and the thing was though, Barrow and Sutton and all that, just with that, and without the owners and the billionaires. I don't know if you remember, actually did better. And Venezuela have obviously improved, I think, just from having these two clubs with their facilities, generating players. Um, because when you look at the history of the Copa America, you don't see Venezuela anywhere. I'm sure out of like most of the playable ones, it's them and Bolivia that are pretty poop. Um, but they came third, which is really respectable when you've got to play Argentina and Brazil. And that's what this is. It's a bit of fun. Like That's why I put the safe house down there. Gives you something different. If you, if you want to have a bit of fun, a season or two with a bit of money, I mean, you could take over Venezuela and try and use some of these kids that are going to come through and try and win a Copa America. Take over one of these teams, boys or the girls, um, with that money and try and not only chase... Because I think that's what the real challenge would be. Not to be chasing the league, because you pretty much could win that easily. Not even chasing the Bazadores, because you've got a good chance with that eventually if you get the right players in. Um, but go for that FIFA Club World Cup. If you could do that with one of these two teams, I think even with money, I still think it'd be challenging. Fair play to you. I think we pretty much know who's won this challenge, but let's have a nice overlay look at it with the beautiful graphic I have prepared for you. And quickly, just remind you, about the point system, so I decided five points for Libertadores, three for a Sudamericana, two for a Recopa, and just one for that league title. So we might as well start with those boys from Deportivo, Jay Z, Michael Jordan, and Kanye West. Well, of course, we've seen they won a lot, and my god, they did pretty well. Four Libertadores, one Sudamericana, four Recopas. 10 league titles giving them a total of 41 points and they only spent 786 million i think that's one of the lowest they usually at least get to a billion but fair play boys and the girls though miss opera win for yourself rihanna and of course kylie jenna at caracas fc when i did the numbers up maybe they had a bit of bad luck here if you're religious especially if they're religious over there aren't they i'm not but they are in south america aren't they this might be a bad omen, because they won one Libertadores, no Sudamericanas, one Recopa, four league titles, getting them only 11 points, but they spent a dreaded 666, 666 million quid. 
Bad luck, girls. So Deportivo and the boys have freaking run away with this. Like I said, it was quite an equal challenge, I felt. It was just, just how it is. I mean, my wife's always going on to me that women are better at organising, sorting things out, planning. Maybe not, love. Maybe I'll show my wife this video. There's proof that we are superior. <laughs> We're not. Without her, this house would collapse. It would fall into shit. I don't know how we would survive. God bless my wife, Mrs. Bood. She's a freaking angel. Love her to bits. But yeah, the boys have won. I'm um, interested to see if any of you could be asked commenting firsthand. It is just a bit of fun, as we know. Um, but as always, thanks for watching. Did nothing major these videos, just <laughs> like putting them together. I enjoy it. Um, I will say I'm going to have a couple of days off now because I've got my friend Greeno. You know, if you know Greeno, you know Greeno. He's coming to my house. We're going to be making a couple of videos. Um, we've got a direct to football challenge video and we've got a head to head battle video where I'm going to be Bocker and he's going to be River. I put a vote out there. You might have took part in it. Um, with a few different derbies and that's the one that won and um, my APL if you remember the American Premier League I've not done it for a couple of years I'm fucking, I am that close it's working I've run some tests I want to fine tune a few things but we're looking at next week maybe mid to the end of next week I'm going to drop the APL database video where we're going to run through all that could be fun for you to play towards the end of this game cycle imagine the American the Americans love soccer and they pumped the money into it and we accessed all that the amazing facilities in the country and it and it had relegation and all the good stuff that's going to be it but i've made a few changes this time compared to older american premier league so i'm very excited to share that one with you but thank you as always for watching one of these i really do appreciate it that might be the last one i might chill out on this for a bit so i do thank you if you watched them all and um, make sure you do good stuff like i said subscribe hit the bell comment become a patron I love you a long time if you do. Patrons are going to get a special treat when FM24 comes out. I'm going to have two copies of FM24 to give away. And my patrons are going to be the ones who get to go for them. So yeah, and and something else as well for them. So yeah, little treats for you boys who support me the most. Um, but thank you as always. Stay happy. Stay safe. Go team boys.